All right, I'm going to be demonstrating the picrocerus red stain. The picrocerus red is not always on the radar of researchers and pathologists, but it's a really great complement to the Masson's trichrome stain. It's very specific for collagen and it's birefringent. It's birefringent for type 2 and type 3 collagen. And one um, interesting fact about it is that it's not birefringent for type 4 collagen. So in the case of kidney, which has um, type 4 collagen around Bowman's capsules or the glomerulus, um, the Bowman's capsule of the glomerulus um, is not going to actually glow, even though um, under the polarized, not under the polarizing filters, just under regular light microscopy, is showing the red um, collagen um, under light microscopy, that type 4 collagen does not glow under the birefringence. So that's an interesting thing to note and can be used actually as a distinguishing factor of the type 4 collagen. Type 2 and 3 collagen are going to, um, and type 1, 2, and 3 are going to birefringe a little bit differently with this stain. Um, under light microscopy, it's going to show all collagen red and all the background staining yellow. Under the birefringence, it's going to show distinct differences um, when it polarizes between the different collagens by color. Some green, some orange, and some brighter orange red to distinguish the different types of collagen. And you can read up more on that. Um, in um, John Kiernan's um, histology book. The protocol I'm going to use is from John Kiernan's histology book, um, but we also have a protocol from American Master Tech, and either one is fine. I prefer John Kiernan's because he goes into a in nice in-depth explanation of the different types of collagen, what they stain for, and the type 4 collagen that doesn't stain, and the kidney explains, he explains that further. So first off, what I want to do is we're going to deparaffinize these slides. I'm going to start, um, we have xylene substitute is what I use for deparaffinization. The deparaffinization steps are, um, the deparaffinization steps are used for pretty much all of the um, paraffin sections for special stains, immunohistochemistry, and even the H&E stain. This first um, deparaffinization to hydration step is, is commonly used. So we start off with three xylenes, or in this case we have xylene substitute for demonstration purposes. It's a um, safe clear, which is a mixed naphthol or aliphatic hydrocarbon. I don't recommend other types of um, xylene substitute like the limonenes or the histosol or anything like that because they're actually as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than xylene itself. So this one is okay to use on the counter. I think something you need to know about Safe Clear is it takes a little bit longer to deparaffinize and get the paraffin out of it. And that deparaffinizing or getting all the paraffin out of the tissue section is a critical stage in your staining process. Then we have 200% alcohols. The purpose of the alcohols are to um, remove the xylene because the xylene or xylene substitute is only miscible with 100% alcohol. Next we have a 95% because we're starting our hydration process, so it um, has some water in it, and we're going to 80% alcohol. The 80% alcohol, again, you can use, um, it's, it's further hydrating, but you can use 70% alcohol, that's not a problem. And then we go into actual tap water, running tap water. The tap water, um, I do that for a minute or two. Some labs, depending on the stain they, and the criticalness of their stain and how controlled they want it, they may actually use um, DI water for this hydration, the final hydration. Most, for most things, regular tap water is just fine. So let's get these started. And while these are getting going for um, six minutes each, I now remember what I said, these take a little bit longer because it is safe clear and it takes a little bit longer to deparaffinize. If this were actual xylene under the hood, um, I would just do with them each of these three stages, five minutes each. So I'm going to go ahead and um, set my timer. 
And in the meantime, while this is going through its five minutes, I'm going to start mixing my Weiger Timotoxylin, which is the first step of the Picrocerus Red. The Weiger Timotoxylin is a popular hematoxylin for several different stains, for um, elastic stains and for um, the trichrome stain, and in this case for the Picrocerus Red. The Weiger Timotoxylin is mixed with 50-50 um, with a solution A and B that we prepare in our lab. You can find the Weiger Timotoxin protocol in the Kiernan book or in the AFIP manual, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. I'm going to mix it 50 50. I'm going to mix 125 of solution A. Since I know my container holds, um, just a little bit more. My solution A is the hematoxin, and the hematoxin is made in this hematoxin is made in 95% alcohol. That's why it dribbles a little bit. Anything made in the alcohol kind of dribbles just a little bit. It's almost unavoidable. Put that away. And then I'm going to use my stock solution B, which is the actual ferric chloride. It's the, the ferric chloride is the iron metal mordant for this particular hematoxin, and this is made in distilled water. And it's a 29% ferric chloride. So I'm going to bring this up to 250. And you can see it turned dark right away when it was added to the hematoxylin. Now, ideally, what we want to come up with is a, a, a black, purplish, black nuclei from this once it's done staining. However, with the Picrocerus red, um, really, the nuclei is not is, is the critical thing, even though it is a component of it. So you do slightly see the nuclei, but um, you're not going to see them as strongly as like what you would see in the trichrome. They're just going to be the nuance of them there. And I'm going to pour these this into my um, container. It's going to mix it a little bit further by pouring it in. We'll get this rinsed right away because it's really dark, and we'll st darkly stain our beaker here or our graduated cylinder, I mean. Okay, in the meantime, our um, five minutes is about up for our first xylene. Let's get into our next xylene. Agitate it slightly and then leave it and set our timer again. Okay, so our five minutes is up again. And since I just freshly made this, I'm going to label it with the date and, and stuff that I was the one who freshly made it and the date that it was made. So the next person. This Weigert's hematoxin will actually last probably up to a week. When it's first freshly made, it's not quite as dark and, and, and ripened as it would be. Normally we make it um, like a 50-50, 50% old, 50% new solution, but this one was getting really old, so I wanted to go ahead and change it. So I'm expecting it to actually take a little bit longer today. To, to stain for me, or to possibly stain for me. I don't know. Um, I'll just I'll take a look at it as I'm going along. Okay, so my five minutes is up. I'm going into my next xylene substitute. Give it some agitation as I go into the next one, and we'll go ahead and give it this another five minutes. And you notice I shook the Picrocerus Red. Something about the Picrocerus Red I want you to notice. Um, make sure that you're getting Picrocerus Red and not just Cirrus Red. The Picrocerus Red actually has picric acid in it. Well, we like this brand American Master Tech. We feel like it birefringes beautifully and the overall stain is beautiful. We've tested a couple others. Um, we also found that PolyScientific has a pretty good Picrocerus Red, although we still prefer the um, American Master Tech brand. So since I just have a couple slides, I don't want to use a whole big container for this Picrocerus Red and waste it, so I'm just going to use this, which holds five slides and um, only holds like 15 mils rather than waste 250 mils in this container. Now, Something I want to mention too is if you have a stain set up where you don't have these bigger buckets like I have and you have just these which are more typical and common, 
you need to um, For xylene and xylene substitute, you want to put that in these green containers because they're made for the xylene and xylene substitute with a different type of plastic. And the alcohols, you're going to want to put into um, the clear containers, all the alcohols and other reagents. So um, if you put xylene or xylene substitute into these, eventually it will deteriorate this plastic and melt the plastic. So that's something to note if your stain setup happens to be the more common one, including the smaller buckets. So I shook up my Picrocerus Red, and I'm going to just need it since I'm going to just have a couple slides. I'm going to fill this um, like two-thirds. That's all I need. And I'm going to use this to hold it, hold my um, slide mailer is what those are called actually, flip top slide mailer but it's actually really good for little mini staining kits if you just have a couple slides to get through. Okay, so my five minutes is up in the um, next xylene. Now I'm moving on to the 100%. Now some laboratories believe you need to put these, um, you need to uh, get the xylene off and you need to hold it in here for a whole full minute or two minutes. I disagree with that. We seem just fine just putting in there for like 10 seconds and agitating it for like 10 to 20 seconds. The purpose of this 100% is to get the xylene off or the xylene substitute off. So we go into the next 100% and we get it, make sure it's really off and start into our dehydration process. Um, so, so this 100% you want to make sure is fully fresh because you're trying to get that xylene off of it. Again, we got 20 to 30 seconds, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. And then we go into 95% alcohol and do some agitation. And again, I'm going to go um, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds with some agitation. The last step is getting into my 80% alcohol. We've gone my 80% alcohol, again, is going to be all that's necessary is um, 10 to 30 seconds with some agitation. The last step is the fully hydration step, which is bringing it into water, and I like to have some running water. In this case, I do like to do a full, at least a full minute, up to two minutes, or it can just be held in the water till you're ready to do your staining. But if you're pressed for time, you, you should at least do a minute in the water. And I like to make sure that the um, slides are fully um, immersed in the water and get all the alcohol and stuff off of them. And we'll just leave it in there with some running tap water for a minute. So we've been a minute in the water. I'm going to shake off the excess water. And I'm going to put this into our Weiger Tematoxylin. I agitate it fully because I want to make sure it's good and stirred up with my fresh Tematoxylin. And um, now the Kiernan book is recommending um, 20 minutes in the Weiger Tematoxylin. I recommend that length of time also. At least 20 minutes to a half an hour. The reason is the Picrocerus Red itself actually differentiates this Tematoxylin and take some of the, um, takes a, quite a bit of it out. And really when you see it under the microscope, you just see the delineation of the um, nuclei, but you don't see it really black like you might see it in the trichrome. And because that's not its main purpose. Its main purpose is just to give you an idea of the nuclei, but you, the main purpose of it is to show the collagen and show that background yellow and really distinguish the collagen in red and then later under polarizing filters to show it in the different um, polarizing um, color changes or colors. An hour here, I think I'll go ahead and go for a half an hour since this is really fresh. All right, so our half an hour is up. We're gonna rinse it. I believe in rinsing um, Weiger Tematoxin a full 10 minutes. Um, if you can, I recommend using warm water too because it gets rid of some of the background staining of the Weiger Tematoxin. Not hot water, but warm water. We put it in there um, 
to have it bind really well, I do do this for the full 10 minutes. It acts a little bit like a bluing step and binding that hematoxylin to the, the tissue section. Now the same Weigert's hematoxin we can use throughout the week for our trichrome stains and other stains that require Weigert's until we see that it's not working well anymore. So the full 10 minutes is up. Now I'm going to shake off the excess water and I'm going to put the slides in the Picrocerus red. I'll close the lid and I'll give it a little shake. Let it sit here. Now the Picrocerus red, it's recommended for at least one hour. Going longer than an hour doesn't hurt it, but it doesn't do anything for it. So you're welcome to leave it in the um, Picrocerus red for two hours. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to cause any problems. Um, but it definitely has to go at least the hour. So while this is um, staining, I'm going to go ahead and set up for the last final steps of this Picrocerus red. The final steps of the Picrocerus red have acid, um, acidified water steps. You can use your um, glacial acetic acid also that you use for your trichrome. It's pretty much um, the same thing. Or you can follow Kiernan's and use his um, protocol for making up the acidified water. It's saying calling for two changes. The acidified water brightens the stain and takes out some of the red and leaves the yellow. So it's part of the differentiator. Now in this stain, it's, um, you want to vigorously shake off the water, this acidified water at the end. And you're going to go directly into 100% alcohol because you don't want to differentiate it in a 95% alcohol. So once you go through these two changes of the acidified water, you shake the slides off and you immediately go into three changes 100% and then to your xylene and then you're ready, you know, your two changes of xylene and you're ready to cover slip it. Okay, so my hour is up. Okay, so I have my two changes of acidified water. I have two changes of raging alcohol, 100% alcohol. There's no intermediary 95% alcohol. I want you to note that. And I have one other 100% alcohol under the hood if I need it, if I think I need it to differentiate it just a touch more. And then I'm going to go on to xylene. So we've already done our full hour in the Picrocerus red. I'm going to get these into a rack, make it easier for myself. As I bring them down, I got these handy forceps that are nice for grabbing the slides in these slide holders. And I'm going to rapidly move through this. It goes very quickly. You just need a few dips in each thing. And then I'm going under the hood to my last 100%. I can see I think I need um, one more 100%. And then I'm going to dip it in my xylene. That's all it needs. It's a very quick stain with a lot of great uses. And you can see, I want to see the nice yellow and I want to see some of the red. You, if you've overdone and taken out the yellow, you may want to bring it back to the Picrocerus red and try again. But it still will buy Refringe, but you'd like to have that, that yellow background. Let me add these to my rack of slides here that I'm going to cover slip. And they can sit in the xylene for a little bit longer as I do my other stains. Be held in xylene. 